Hello everyone, Amy here, coming to you from my kitchen. I just want to grab a floor. I hope you are all doing well today. Happy, I don't know, Wednesday it is. Um, I, after last night's cooking class, which we had so much fun, if you missed that, make sure that you join the group so you get an invite to next week's. Last night we made uh, turkey burgers and turkey meatballs and turkey sliders, which got me thinking about all things summer um, and about like cooking in the summer and having things ready for the lake. So I got thinking I have these chicken breasts in the fridge um, and uh, we talked a little bit last night about freezer meals and so having them at the lake and really, I mean, freezer meals are great anytime. Um, and so I wanted to show you one of my favorite um, freezer meals tonight because I had, this is, I had chicken breasts left over from my Costco pack the other night and um, it was five chicken breasts and that's really too much for us in a meal, uh, for us to just have it as one meal. So I wanted to make some for tonight because we have a little bit of leftovers from last night. Um, and so I didn't want to have, you know when your fridge just gets too many leftovers in it? Even though we're all home, you still can have too many leftovers. I don't know. Are you leftover people? I'm not a big leftover person. The kids will eat it for lunch and Ian will eat it. So anyway, I didn't want to make too much. So I wanted to show you, this is one of those things that when it comes to cooking at dinner time, this is all about prepping and cooking not really even cooking, but prepping once and cooking two or three or more times. So this recipe that I'm using today, he comes out of one of the big cook cookbooks. Have you guys seen these? These are pretty old. I haven't seen, they had two of them. They were put out by a couple of ladies in Medicine Hat um, many years ago. Um, and they're actually a really fun, I don't know, I, I'm gonna say I don't know if you can buy them anymore. But what's fun about them is that you can see the little colored columns here. So this book is actually designed for you to make recipes that go multiple times. And so this one has, in the columns, it has, this is for one meal, four meals, six meals, or eight meals. So if you really like a recipe, it automatically figures out, which I love. I mean, I know how to figure it all out, but if somebody tells me that I need half a cup, I'm all in for not having to figure that out. So we are just making one meal because this she has two pounds of chicken and I weighed the chicken and I had about two and a half pounds. So I'm making one version of this. So this is called maple chicken. Now let me tell you why I love this one. Um, I will make this one up and put it in Ziploc bags or sometimes I vacuum seal it depending on um, what we got going on and I take it to the lake. So this is my like lake season, camping season, supper hack, um, my quick cooker. We have one of these at the lake too, it's my friend. Um, and one of the things I love the most about it is that, um, and I think I've said this before, I have this little thing where I leave the beach about four o'clock, I head back to the cabin to go to the bathroom and to put supper in, and then I go back to the beach for an hour while supper finishes. Because if I put that chicken and all the sauce in here frozen solid and turn it on for an hour, when I come back after supper, or after being at the beach for a little bit longer, because let's be honest, nobody really wants to leave the beach on a beautiful day, but if I know that supper is already cooked, it stays warm in here um, for a long time after it's cooked. So that is one of the things I love about this recipe. And so I have a couple of recipes that I do this with, but this is one of my favorites. And I think one of all of our favorites. So it takes apricot jam. Do you have, do you buy apricot jam? So you could substitute pineapple in a lot of the recipes, but apricot jam is actually super commonly asked for in um, like marinades and stuff. So that's when I actually always keep apricot jam in my fridge. It's just one of those ones that I've always tended to keep. So it takes apricot jam and it takes maple syrup. And I don't like maple, wasting maple syrup. So I, oh, it only takes a tablespoon, not three. So that's what I love about using this little guy. Um, is that I can just pour it out and it's all cleaned out. Oh, Bertha. Somebody's walking by. Okay. 
a maple syrup, and then it says Worcester. And I don't have to worry about it sticking, so it needs a one and a half tablespoons of Worcester. And then one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. This is another one of those ingredients. I don't know, are you Dijon people? Do you like Dijon? Not sure I had it on my agenda to wear today, but apparently. Um, so it needs a tablespoon of Dijon. Um, I keep Dijon in the fridge. I like it for recipes. I find it just adds a little bit more. And I actually really like, oh my goodness, I should have put on an apron. Um, I really like Dijon on my ham, so I tend to always have it. Uh, excuse me while I unmustered my shirt there for a moment. Okay. Um, lemon juice. Oh yeah, I grabbed a lemon out. Okay. I'm just going to cut it, squeeze some lemon. It was. So this is, okay, so let me read this for you again. Um, apricot jam, maple syrup, Worcestershire, um, Dijon mustard, lemon juice. I'm actually gonna measure my lemon juice because uh, it's funny, I made, a, I made a recipe the other day and I was actually making a recipe um, and it was a, a, like a lemon asparagus and it was so lemony that I had a good laugh. We laughed at the kitchen table about the fact that good chance the recipe didn't anticipate getting this volume of lemon out of the, like because the citrus press gets so much more lemon juice out and fresh lemon juice is always so much stronger than than just the jarred stuff right and then it needs dun, 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 three tablespoons of mayo this guy is getting his work out of him today this is one i love my measure all cups for and i know you probably lots of you probably have big ones but this is the little one, uh, the little quarter cup or four tablespoon one. Um, it's perfect for these little jobs when you don't have to get the big one dirty. Okay, then you just kind of whisk this all together. And I know the other day we talked about it, but can we talk about the whisk again? It's right to the corners. I must be a grown up, fascinated by my whisk. Okay, and then that's it. So it just looks like kind of a mustardy marinade. It's so, like it's got that little bit of sweetness from the maple syrup and the jam, and it's just so, so lovely. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of it in my quick cooker. I don't need much because I only have a little bit of the meat, because this recipe is for a whole two pounds. So then I'm just gonna pour the rest of it into this bag and put the bag in the freezer so that the next time I don't know what to make for that supper, um, I have this already ready. It was kind of one of those days. I don't know. Does anybody else have those days where you're not sure what to make for supper and you're not sure if you want whatever was thawed in the fridge? I was having one of those kind of days. And that's my thought of this recipe. So I've just put that marinade in the bag. I'm going to get all of the air out of it. Because you want to get as much air out of it as you can. That's what really helps you to prevent um, freezer burn. And then it is already, literally next time I go to make this meal, because I already cut them in half. You saw me use my clothes and cut. You know I love my clothes and cut. Um, when I go to make this the next time, I'm literally gonna cut this bag open and dump this into the quick cooker frozen. Um, and then supper will just happen in about, when it's solidly frozen, I put it on for about 40 minutes, uh, 40 to 45 minutes. Um, but when it's thawed like this one, I'll probably put it on for 10. Like it doesn't take any time if it's already thawed. Um, so it just, is so quick so don't forget if the quick cooker is on your list chicken is 15 minutes uh, I don't think it needs that long I'm gonna turn it down 10 and that's it supper is gonna be ready I've got some rice that I'm putting in and I'm also gonna have some cauliflower that I need to use up and I personally love the there's a recipe we have a recipe for um, it's called spicy cauliflower bites there to die for um, and it's like panko cauliflower so I'm gonna make some of those and um, uh, and the chicken and some rice and we're gonna have supper and it was quick and easy and I think that's one of the things I love the most about my quick cooker is it for nights like this when I just didn't really want to um, 
it's gonna handle supper for me and then the pot's gonna go in the dishwasher because you all know that I love that and supper will be ready in quite literally under 20 minutes um, so that's a super fun one and then if I if this is done early it can just stay here and naturally release the steam and it's there's no harm in it it's gonna stay hot and um, that chickens just, just gonna get it kind of get more tender and more shreddable really even and so we'll serve it on top of some rice and have a great easy supper so I hope you're all having a good Wednesday and digging out under your snow if you have it and um, I'm I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm sure of it. Bye for now.